Hello my friends, this is Dr. Jimmy and it's time for my second American Horror Story cocktail for this year's upcoming haunted house, American Horror Story, the next installment featuring Asylum, Coven and Roanoke. And I already made one for Asylum in the previous video and I hope you're out there drinking one right now, <laughs> if you find the right ingredients. But I have invited some friends to come along and have some cocktails with us. Come here, ladies, ladies, and here they are. Here are my lovely ladies. This is Fiona Good. She's looking supremely elegant tonight in her, her black ensemble. We always wear black on Wednesdays, after all. And uh, here's her lovely daughter, Cordelia Fox, with her garden shears. You look closely. Two lovely ladies from New Orleans who have shown up uh, as I've added new figures into my Halloween Horror Nights gallery now that Coven is a part of it. Funko Pop did not make any for Asylum nor for Roanoke. Maybe they'll fix that, hmm? I hope so, you nice people at Funko. You want to make some pops for us for the bits that we don't have them for. We would like that, please. But they've done six for Coven. Uh, in addition to the two I just showed you, this Marie Laveau, I've already got that one on its way. She's not here yet. And then, of course, there'll be uh, Metal Snow and Misty Day. And finally, Papa Legba. Now, I have to say something about Papa Legba here because I'm a pedantic professor of religion. And I know a bit about voodoo. Uh, <clears throat> Papa Legba is not the creature you see in American Horror Story Coven. He's not the guy with the top hat and the tailcoat. No, 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 no. That would be one of the barons, like Baron Cimetière, or Baron Criminel, or Baron Lacroix, or most famously, Baron Samedi. The gods of lords of the cemetery, gods of the dead. Well, if you call them gods, sort of the lower spirits of the dead, I suppose. The Gede. But, Papa Legba is a different sort of lower altogether. He's usually seen as an old man, sometimes as a little boy. Sometimes he's called a Legba, as well as Legba. But Legba is the opener of the way. He is like Ganesh, you know, in Hinduism. You pray to Legba first, or to invoke Legba first, before you can get to the other lower. Uh, he's sort of a gatekeeper. And that's why he's also associated with St. Peter, who keeps the keys to the kingdom, right? And uh, in voodoo, they took these African spirits, the lower, and they merged them with Catholic saints. And that happened quite a bit, and so often uh, Legba is associated with St. Peter for that reason. So he's not at all the sort of creature you saw in American Horror Story Coven. That being said... Uh, he's also not the devil. Uh, even Baron Samadhi is not the devil. So the way they had him as the Lord of Hell, that's completely foreign to voodoo. Anyway, but getting past that nonsense, uh, so, you know, just because Mr. Murphy doesn't know his voodoo properly to make a, uh, to make a TV show, Ryan Murphy and Brian Falchuk, shame on you. You should research your voodoo before you do do it wrong. Do you do it wrong? Ew. Sounds like constipation to me. Anyway, <laughs> we need to have a cocktail for American Horror Story Coven, and it's set in beautiful New Orleans, the Crescent City, the Big Easy. Right? An American Horror Story Coven, then in New Orleans, lands of Mardi Gras and voodoo and Anne Rice and all that neat stuff that gumbo of different cultures all mixed up all exciting magic and mystery what a wonderful place that's doomed because it's going to sink into the sea thank you global warming all you bastards anyway that's true unfortunately so if you haven't been to New Orleans get there while you still can especially during Mardi Gras but they have a signature cocktail. In fact, they say the cocktail was invented in New Orleans by a fellow named Dr. Peychaud, who was an apothecary way back in the 19th century. 
uh, Dr. Peychaud supposedly invented the whole idea of a cocktail. And one cocktail that he came up with is called the Sazerac. And that is the signature, the, the cocktail, official cocktail of New Orleans. What more appropriate cocktail than for American Horror Story Coven? But, of course, we have to add a witchy twist. And I will do that. So, first to make the cocktail. According to the classic Sazerac recipe, you need a rocks glass. Then you need to rinse the rocks glass with absinthe. Absinthe makes the heart go fonder, yes. Absinthe, of course, a notorious elixir that was banned for many years, uh, but has recently been made legal again due to its alleged hallucinogenic properties. <laughs> Yes, uh, I've chosen a green absinthe rather than a rather, you know, this weird blue eye thing. It makes me look like I have goat eyes. How interesting. Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here is, here is Mephisto. Mephisto absinthe from Austria. Comes from Vienna. Nice city. Like, New Orleans is a nice city. So is, so is Vienna. I've been there as well. Uh, this is a green absinthe potent stuff you're only supposed to just put a tiny bit in the glass just a tiny little bit that's all and then basically once you do that you're supposed to rinse the glass so it's in the glass a little teeny bit and you turn it and let the liquid let it slide around inside the glass slide around to coat the outside of the glass uh, the, I'm sorry coat the inside of the glass so you can see that little there with the, the liquor's going up into the sides and you just sort of do that then you're supposed to throw out the excess that's a waste of alcohol <coughs> mm. yeah taking absinthe straight is not the best thing in the world you're supposed to mix it with water and sugar it's powerful sip well oh god I'm seeing things I'm seeing something scary right in front of me. Oh, it's myself. Never mind. So there's that. So once you rinse it out, then you take a sugar cube and you take another glass, which is a glass, a, a separate glass, and you put the sugar cube and then you break it up, okay? I tried earlier. This is my second take on this video. And when I was doing that, I broke the fucking glass and I had to throw it all away because I didn't want glass in my cocktail because that's really not a good thing. Is that a piece of broken glass? I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, I, th I think I got it all up. But here, this is sugar. I've pre-smashed the sugar cube. I don't have a, one of those mortar pestle muddling objects. So I had to put it in a paper towel, wrap up the sugar cube paper towel, and take a bloody hammer and go bang, 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 like a serial killer. And then I took the paper towel and emptied it nicely into it. So here is some, sh some broken up sugar cube on the bottom of this. All right. Now, what's next? What you do then is you put rye whiskey. It's supposed to be rye whiskey. There's actually a brand of rye whiskey called Sazerac. Uh, I don't have that on me, however. What I have is this High West uh, double rye, which is actually made of all places in Park City, Utah. I think I used it on a cocktail for Halloween Horror Nights 26. So I'm going to pour a measure of that into my jigger. Okay. So here it is. A lovely rye whiskey. And then you pour it into this glass. Is that right? I think so, yes. So you pour it in there. Okay. So now you have the whiskey and the sugar in the glass. All right. Put the whiskey and the sugar in the glass, then you mix it up so that the sugar dissolves in the whiskey as best as possible. Hmm. Now what do you do? Then you take another classic ingredient, which is from New Orleans itself. Peychaud's Bitters, the formula created by Dr. Peychaud. Yes, Peychaud's Bitters, 
and these only come from New Orleans and they're hard to find but uh, until recently and people started doing more cocktails and now I think you can usually find them in good alcohol vending units where they still a lot of bitters now people are getting into bitters used to be you just had Angostura and that's all you could find now there's Angostura orange bitters and you can find all sorts of celery bitters and and uh, and uh, chocolate bitters and all sorts of lemon bitters orange bitters all sorts of things uh, but this is a very good one and it's bright red and this is Peixo bitters and so what you do is you put that put several drops of this not just a little bit but a few good dashes never be afraid of your bitters okay so that's in there too so now you've got all of that in here in fact another thing that should be in there that I forgot about the damn ice okay so I should have put the ice in before I put the whiskey in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it in fortunately fortunately it, it's a tall glass and so it didn't splash out so I put the ice in there so now it's ice that's better ice and sugar and whiskey and pesho bitters now this would be a Sazerac and all you're supposed to do now is put one of these over the same rocks remember the one that was rinsed with the absinthe you put that on top and then you strain this into there and when you do that this will be your lovely Sazerac except I'm going to do it the different way I'm going to do it this way because I don't want the damn ice to fall on top and bounce over the place because that's silly uh, even though I, in the picture I saw they did it the other way because I'm not that good of a bartending skill so I don't have that many barman skills except now the classic Sazerac needs something to witch it up and I looked and looked but I found what I thought was the best thing of all cocktail ingredients what could be more witchy than strega that's licore strega literally witch liqueur from Italy here it is if you look carefully on the label you see the old witch right here with a broom and underneath I love that illustration there's a whole coven of lovely witches with uh, breasts exposed dancing with the old man himself there he is goat legs and horns old cle uh, cleft foot you know who I mean old Nick old scratch mr. Satan the devil so here it is wonderful wonderful stuff sort of has an herbal flavor uh, a bit like oh I don't know chartreuse or Mm, that's sort of what it smells like. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a good half measure of that. Good half measure of that. Already 13 minutes. And I'm going to add that to the mi mixture. So what was a classic Sazerac now gets a twist. It's usually served with a lemon twist as a garnish, but I'm not going to bother that. I'm just going to stir it up. And the yellow liqueur gives it a, more of an, a slightly orange cast. Hard to tell here, it looks red, but not as red as it did earlier. Now, this is what I will pour into the rocks glass that has been thoroughly rinsed with absinthe. So, Sazerac. And by adding the extra ingredient, we have more liquid in this glass. Because usually, when you make it according to the classic recipe, it's only about this high. So there's more liquid in the container. And that also means it's much more potent. And it will probably fuck you up a lot more. So here it is. This is my Sazerac with a witchy twist for American Horror Story Coven. Now let's try the thing and hope it doesn't turn me into a newt. Wow! Wow! That does not taste like a traditional Sazerac at all. It has a spectacular flavor. Uh, the, the rye whiskey and the Strega meld together in a way that I've never tasted before. This is rather amazing. Wow! 
I'm not sure how I can describe it. Hmm. It's almost a, it's a little like, well, no, it isn't. I mean, I'm thinking about Campari. I'm thinking about other notes, but this is, it, it, it's very unique. I mean, there's things in that remind me of Chartreuse, that remind me of Jägermeister. And I don't mean the harsher notes, but the more herbal notes. Um, there's, there's, there's flavors that are all, all combined. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of a Negroni, except Negroni has gin. Um, but I suppose, you know, gin has all those botanicals. That's completely different. It's like a, a potion, <laughs> of course. It's like a witch's brew. <laughs> My goodness. I like. Strega, of course, is an Italian witch. Oh, I just saw something on the back. It's like there's this, there's a, there's a, a, a glass image. It shows the witch's head, the old witch's head and her broom. I like that. Isn't it pretty? Isn't it pretty right here? So it's a neat, neat stuff. If you yes, I research all sorts of obscure liquors, you know, liqueurs and 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 uh, cordials and, and and stuff because you never know what sort of right ingredient you might put together to make a fantastic cocktail for horror nights. Yes, just like Severus Snape <laughs> working on that. Of course, uh, <clears throat> I'm sad. To, the fate of Severus, he's all dead, and the man who played him is all dead, and that makes me sad. But, but his memory lives on, both the character and the actor. The great Alan Rickman. Uh, make sure I didn't get any glass on me. I think it was just one piece that fell out. I couldn't find any more, but I don't want to cut myself. I certainly hope nothing got in here. Nah, it was nowhere near the... Mm. If I drop dead, and <laughs> then you know. But no, there wasn't any. Now, I'm very careful about broken glass. I had a bad incident with broken glass as a small boy. Got all cut up. And so I'm extraordinarily paranoid. A moment I was trying to break up that little sugar cube with a spoon. Don't try to break up a sugar cube with a spoon. It doesn't work. Crack! Oh, fuck! You know, the glass broke before the damn sugar cube broke. That tells you something. So I took a hammer to the fucking sugar cube. Not the same cube, though. That one got, went in the trash along with the broken glass. And it's a glass I really like. I had four of them at one point, and now there's only one left. Damn. Ugh. Lenny's over there, standing, sniffing around some boxes. You know, cats and boxes, they love boxes. But, uh, may take me a few more minutes to finish this one. It's good, though. I'm really amazed with that. I did not expect it. I mean, I've had a Sazerac before. This tastes very different. There's some similarities, but... You know, there's a very, very remote licorice flavor just almost non-existent from the absent and the rye and the paste shows what you normally taste but now this is amazing because the strega really worked with all of those magically i, I can't i can't believe how this tastes it's just mm. oh i forgot to put forgot to put the cap back on my strega it would be awful if Lenny jumped on this on this uh, desk and tipped it over and it spilled on the floor. And then she'd drink it, and then I'd have a fucked up cat. Don't want a fucked up cat. I'd probably kill her if she drank too much of it. Probably kill me if I drank too much of it. But she only weighs seven pounds, you know. <laughs> Whereas I weigh a hell of a lot more. Not telling you exactly, but too much. Hmm. Oh, bloody hell. I like this. I really like this. Do you approve, Miss Fiona? She does. So does Cordelia. 
and hopefully we'll have this. I'm surprised they didn't make any of the girls, I mean the young girls, I mean there's Misty Day, but they didn't have, they didn't have any of the, the kids, you know. Uh, oh well. Oh. This one's taking a bit long because I have to finish this off. Then, of course, I have to prepare my third American Horror Story Coven Cocktail. What time is it? Oh, it's only 8.34. I have time. The Walking Dead doesn't start till 9. <laughs> so, hey. But, uh... Mmm. 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 Good. Good, good, good. Anyway. Uh, the third one is for Roanoke. And I've got an idea about that one that's pretty insane, <laughs> but not asylum insane, Roanoke insane, because you know there's madness in that show too. Mm. I suppose I could just, you know, gulp the rest of it down, but I might hurt myself. And of course, there's another factor. I already have the one cocktail. This is the second one. So I'm increasingly becoming less sober as I proceed, which is always amusing. Mm. So, here we go. Mm. Mm. Yep. I'm looking forward to <coughs> The Haunted House. Coven should be a lot to find. It was one of my favorite series of American Horror Story. I really liked that one. I liked it much better than Murder House and, uh, and Asylum. And Freak Show was amazing, too. And Hotel was... I liked Hotel a lot, but not as much as the preceding one. Although I love Lady Gaga's character. I really liked her. And, and of course, they brought back Finn Rittrock. And God damn, Finn Rittrock is pretty. I don't know if he's going to be in Row. No, he wasn't really in Roanoke very much until near the end. And they made him ugly. They made him ugly in Roanoke. That's a crime. Crime. Oh, but... Uh, but uh, Roanoke was good. And part seven, uh, the seventh series, which will be out, I suppose, next October or September, um, has some connect. Oh, there goes a Lenny Cat. Black Cat. The Lenny Cat just ran by again, tail. Silly Lenny. Ooh, you silly kitty. What's the kitty doing? Lenny, what are you doing, Lenny? She's, she's sniffing the two witch Funko Pops. Now, she's coming back this way. Don't drink my cocktail, Lenny. It's not good for cats. Silly cat. Mm. Alright, well, I just finished it. I just finished it. Oh, next, the seventh series of American Horror Story is supposed to be about the election we had last year. I bet there's a lot of scary shit about that election, but to do what American Horror Story? I don't think it's going to be primarily about the election, but it may have something to do tangentially with what madness that went on. Uh, I would say, you know, the Antichrist might be involved. After all, we saw the little brat being born at the beginning, at the end of Murder House. So, will there be a sequel where he's up a little bit, a little bit older? Hmm. Who knows? All right. Oh, silly me. I can't leave until I've turned this off. All right. So, clicking off, I'll be back in a little bit with the third American Horror Story Coven cocktail for Roanoke coming up in a few minutes probably. <laughs>